Hello, this is Patreon in the Dark. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go over my Chinese SKS. Uh, this is going to be a short series because the videos end up being a little long. I'll go through the description of how it looks and where things are located for my visually impaired friends. And then we'll go into a field strip and tear, take down and stuff. So let's check it out. <laughs> All right, before I start, um, on screen is my Chinese SKS. The rifle buttstock is facing to the left. The muzzle is facing to the right. It's laying on its left side. The right side of the rifle is facing up towards the camera. Now, I'll give you just some basics on the SKS. Uh, the SKS is a Russian design. It was designed in 1943 or 44. There's a lot of information out there, so we're not gonna go into too much. Um, it's chambered in 762 by 39. This is a semi-auto rifle. It's fed by a 10-round internal box magazine, and you uh, load the firearm with 10-round stripper clips, which we'll go into that in a little bit here. Uh, like most Russian items, they shared it with their allies or countries they were in control of that didn't care for us, and this one was made in China. Now, this actual rifle was imported in the late 80s to early 90s, um, just prior to the 94 gun ban, which there is a link in the description. If you don't know what that's about, we got to know our history. So make sure you check that out. But uh, this was purchased uh, by um, a gentleman, and I actually purchased this about two years ago. Um, after he bought it in the early 90s, it sat in a safe, so it hasn't been shot very much. This is not a military version. This is a commercial version. Um, it does have the spike bayonet, and we'll go over all the features for uh, my visually impaired friends. So as it sits right now, I am i don't know if it's actually all in screen, so I'm going to slide it to the right so that we can kind of des describe it here. Um, it does have a wood butt stock, uh, the wood stock, which is probably about uh, three quarters of the length of the rifle. The total length of the rifle is about 40 inches, the barrel's 20 inches. Um, but starting at the far left, we'll start with the butt plate. It's a metal butt plate. In the center of the butt plate is a round trap door. Um, it's spring loaded and inside that is where you'll find your uh, cleaning kit. And it's the same as the, the AK-47 style. Um, if you slide to the right across the top of the stock, you'll run into uh, the dust cover. Now it's a, a straight backed um, which is perpendicular to the barrel. It goes up about an inch and a quarter or so. Um, the dust cover is metal, and it's about uh, six inches long or so. Um, just in front of that, going farther to the right, is your um, bolt carrier um, assembly. And basically, that's what has your charging handle and stuff. And we can actually check if this is uh, loaded here. It locks to the rear because there's no rounds in it. And I verify with my finger. Um, anyways, with... All right, back to this. Um, just in front of the charging handle on the barrel, there is the rear sight. The rear sight is actually kind of cool. It's uh, two plates, two rectangles. Um, the bottom plate is mounted to the barrel. The front of that plate has a pin and a pivot for the top plate. Um, on the back side of the top plate towards the, the left, which is your buttstock, um, is it just a notched rear sight, um, and it lifts up. Now, that top plate has a spring that keeps it down, but if you lift it up, there's two finger tabs on each side of the top plate, and if you pinch together, you can slide that forward or backward. And what that does is as you push it forward towards the muzzle to the right, um, it raises that back sight up. All right, and it's uh, graduated from 100 to 1,000 meters. All right, now just to the right of that, you have your upper hand guard. It's about six inches, it's wood, and this covers uh, the piston area in your gas tube. Um, just prior, or just right of that is your gas tube, and it's, uh, it's about five inches or so. It drops into your gas block, which drops under uh, down to your barrel, because your barrel is below uh, the gas tube, all right? And this is a short action uh, piston. All right, I think we can get this in. Um, just after you drop down to the barrel from your uh, your gas block, you go to the right 
and the next thing you'll notice is your uh, front sight post. Now this is a raised post. Um, your your sight is inside and it's got a, a loop kind of a cover on it so that it won't bang and, and hit on anything. And the top of that, there is an access point where you can adjust your uh, front sight post. All right, and that's actually, actually about uh, uh, two inches high or so, maybe not. Um, just prior or just after the front sight post, you have your muzzle. And this is just a, a squared off muzzle. There's no angles or anything on it. Um, now, if you go to the bottom of the barrel, that uh, where the sight post is, your front, front sight, the bottom of that is actually the connection point for your bayonet. All right, and this is an attached bayonet. Um, it's folded or uh, extended. Now in the folded position, the, the point of the bayonet faces your buttstock and it folds underneath the barrel. All right, and this is actually a uh, spike bayonet. So the, the bayonet, had, the cross section kind of looks like a Y with like T marks on the, the ends of the pieces. Um, and it makes kind of a nasty wound. Um, to extend your bayonet, um, just underneath the, the front sight post, after that connection, there's a short little section that's spring-loaded that's attached on the bayonet. It has a ring on it, and you basically just pull it towards the end of the bayonet, which in the folded position is obviously to your uh, left, which is to the buttstock. You pull that back, and the bayonet will swing down, all right, and you unfold it and basically swing it around to the, uh, so it's fully extended, pointing towards the, the muzzle, that direction. That little collar, if you pull it out, that ring fits over the muzzle piece and then that's locked into position, all right? All right, so once you have that, if you unfold it, as you swing your uh, bayonet down, so it's pointed directly down, that releases the tension of the cleaning rod, which is pinned in between the bayonet when it's folded and the uh, barrel. So it's underneath there and it just slides in and then when you fold it to the closed position, it locks it in so it won't fall out, hopefully, yeah. So, all right, and when the bayonet is folded, uh, folded position, there is a groove that's cut in the bottom of the stock and so it fits in there nice and it uh, uh, won't catch your hand as much um, if it wasn't exposed. So, all right, just behind, going back to the left, now on the bottom of the rifle, um, if you follow uh, just past the, the end of the bayonet is your uh, box magazine. Now this is an attached back, uh, magazine. Um, if you look at the rounds of 762 by 39, um, the rim area is larger, obviously, than the, the bullet end, um, and they're tapered, they're bottlenecked. And so as you stack, um, the cartridges together, uh, the bullet end, the, the pointy end, is narrower than the uh, rimmed end, right? So that's why, like on the AK-47, uh, the magazines are curved. Well, this small box magazine in the front is pinned, all right? And it'll actually, in the, behind that magazine, there's a lever to drop it so that you can clear the rounds. But the shape of this little magazine, uh, the front side, which is towards your muzzle, is basically flush um, maybe just a little bit lower than the stock itself. And then the back of that magazine towards your butt stock is about an inch, inch and a quarter or so. So it's kind of like a small piece of pie um, underneath uh, the chamber. So uh, like I said, behind it is a little lever that you pull back and you can drop it to clear the rounds out of the rifle. All right, uh, just behind that towards the butt stock is your trigger guard, all right? Once you follow your trigger guard all the way around to the back, all the way to the left, which is uh, closer to your buttstock, um, just prior to that, to the right, is your safety. Now the safety on this is a lever. The uh, pin portion, the pivot point, is right next to uh, the, the back of the trigger guard next to your stock, all right? It's inside the trigger guard. And basically it's a lever. Uh, when it's unsafe, the lever is pointing towards your muzzle. When it's on fire, it swings directly down, so it's straight down, um, and then that's on fire. Now, the safety uh, lever here has a kind of a, a cool shape. It's like a little ear that sticks out, and then it forms with uh, the contours of the stock, 
So in the fire or the safe position, when your finger is fully extended straight, pointing towards the muzzle, and you're ready to fire, you just sweep down with your finger. It flips uh, it on fire, and your finger's already on the trigger. So it's pretty qu quick to uh, to put it on fire. Um, it's all one motion. Now behind that, it just goes back into the stock, back to the butt plate. Now the sling on this, um, if I flip this over so that the trigger guard is facing uh, to the top of the screen, all right, we'll just flip it up a little bit. Um, the, the rear stock mount or sling mount is in the center of the stock, all right? It's not on the bottom or the, the back, it's like right in the middle. So when this is laying on its left side, um, it is really wobbly, but that's the bottom. And then the top sling point is the, the back side of your gas block, right? And then this is, a, uh, this is a sling I picked up because the rifle didn't have a sling when I first picked it up. So um, that, now to load this rifle, um, I did say it was uh, loaded by a stripper clip. Let's get this back in the center here. Um, now I'll grab this up. Now a stripper clip, if you don't know what it looks like, it's about, uh, I don't know, three quarters inch wide. It's a long uh, piece of uh, sheet metal. Uh, the edges are rolled over on the narrow side, or the long side, um, so that that folds and catches the rim of your cartridge, all right, so that you can lock uh, your cartridges on the stripper clip, right? Uh, what that does is, uh, the best way to describe that, it looks like a, a the stripper clip is a line and it looks like icicles hanging off, right? Just in case you've never seen a stripper clip. Um, anyways, and how you use this, um, it puts, you put 10 cartridges on that stripper clip. It's easy to hang on to. Uh, when you rack your uh, charging handle to the rear and it locks back, on the face of the bolt, there's uh, notches cut so that your, uh, your stripper clip itself will feed into it and it drops down and it locks in. And then what you do is you just push the cartridges um, off, thus stripping them off the clip. So that's what a clip is, if you were wondering. Um, and then once that's done, then you just uh, uh, let the bolt go home. Um, but that's the basic overview. Uh, I'll try to keep this one short and then we'll get into uh, stripping it down, taking all the parts apart. So. I uh, hope that helped you out. I hope you know what it looks like now. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I do appreciate you watching. Make it an outstanding day. Never fear the dark.